welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about wedding planning, which is something that has been consuming my life a little bit for the past six months, I would say. Specifically, planning a destination wedding, which I feel like is becoming a more and more popular concept nowadays. It's easier to travel, obviously post-COVID, people are wanting to get away, do something a little bit different for the wedding. We personally chose to do a destination wedding because we live on the other side of the world to our family. So either way, we were gonna be traveling for the wedding rather than everyone coming here. So we decided why not make it a trip, make a holiday out of it, which is very exciting. However, it is also quite stressful. There's a lot more you need to think about and consider than if you're planning a wedding in the city slash country that you live in. It was a lot of trial and error for us, but I thought I would make it a little bit easier for you give you some kind of tips and tricks, give you the process of how we went about it basically in the hopes that this makes the whole process a little bit easier for you. So I'm just gonna get stuck straight into it. Um, if you do have any further questions on this that I don't answer in the video, please feel free to leave me a comment. Um, happy to answer and hopefully can help in some way. So starting off, um, the first tip I would give straight off the bat is give yourself plenty of time. We personally weren't in any rush when we got married. We didn't even start planning our wedding until like a year, maybe two after we got engaged. But I know some people do want to get married quickly for whatever reason. I think you put a lot of extra pressure and stress on yourself if you're trying to turn it around within like a year. Plus with a destination wedding, you do want to give guests as much notice as possible to get the time off work, to get the holiday booked, to save up as well. Like it is an expense for people, it's a big ask. So I would recommend giving yourself at least a year and a half if not ideally maybe two years um, if you can just so that yeah the pressure's off and it's it's just a little less stressful when you have plenty of time that's also just the nature of weddings even to order a dress you're supposed to order like a year in advance so basically don't make it more stressful than it needs to be if you can take your time give yourself plenty of time so that'd be tip number one um, in terms of the steps and the process of playing a destination wedding step one is obviously choosing the country that you're wanting to get married in this might be a country you're familiar with, somewhere you've been to a lot, somewhere that means something to you. Um, it might just be that you want to do a wedding abroad and you have a few options or you're not entirely sure which country you want to do it in. Probably the most important thing to look into is the legal aspects of getting married in these countries. This was something that ultimately took us a long, long time to figure out. There are a lot of rules and regulations. Obviously getting married is a legal contract. <laughs> So different countries have different rules, different laws around it. You need different documentation. Some countries you need to get things translated. Some countries you need to be in the country for a period of time beforehand so that you can submit a notice of marriage. And then you have to stay within the country for a month before you can get married. Uh, some countries you have to be a citizen to get married there. So there was a lot that we kind of crossed off straight away because of that. But obviously do your own research, have a look online. There's loads of information online um, on the requirements of different countries, but don't go ahead and get excited and start, make, start making plans to get married in a country and then realize that you can't. <laughs> a way around this that is what we are doing is doing the legal part separately. So we're just going to do a very small kind of courthouse wedding for the legal aspects, maybe a week or so before we fly to our destination wedding, just to sign the papers, legally get married, and then our wedding will be more of a big celebration. You can still have a ceremony at your wedding, you can still say the exact same words, you can even sign a fake piece of paper so that it feels like a real wedding and that is in our eyes a wedding, that's when all our family and friends are going to be there but legally we will need to get married beforehand because we can't legally get married in the country that our wedding is in, <laughs> that makes sense. The other thing to consider when you're choosing your country is the holiday aspect of it. You would imagine people will be flying in for at least a few days, um, maybe even up to you know a week, two weeks, people are going to be making this, I guess, a holiday. So that is something that you need to consider. Is this a good place for a holiday? Is it somewhere that's gonna suit everyone's needs? If you have people bringing children, is there, you know, is it a child-friendly sort of place? Is there plenty for kids to do? Is there plenty for adults to do? Um, are there plenty of hotels that they can book in and, you know, or Airbnbs, accommodation at reasonable prices? What area are you going to sort of base yourself in? Are there plenty of flights in and out from all different places? If you've got people com coming from different airports and different countries, are these really long flights? It's gonna take them hours and hours and cost them a lot of money to get there. There's a lot of things to consider from a holiday perspective. I, I think it's important not just to look at this as this is our wedding and this is where we want to get married. You've got to look at it as people are gonna be paying money to come and have a holiday in this place. Is it a good place to go on holiday? The other thing to consider, still on location here, is the amount of vendors in that country. You want to get married on a beautiful remote island, incredible, it's gonna be gorgeous. 
who's going to do your catering, how you're going to find a makeup artist, where you're going to get photographers. If you want to get married in a more remote location or somewhere that's slightly less common to get married, make sure you take into consideration that you're going to need a wedding. <laughs> you're going to need people to help you put together a wedding if it's not a country that people often go for a destination wedding or yeah it's somewhere quite small um you might struggle so something to consider before again you commit to a venue or anything like that do some research chat with the venue as well and just ensure there's plenty of vendors around within your budget as well if there's a lack of vendors then obviously the price can often drive up supply demand situation so um, ensure that yeah there's plenty of vendors for everything that you need you may want to consider going somewhere that is a little more common <laughs> for people to get married just to save yourself the hassle of really having to scour and find people and not have many options you know once you have made your decision on the country you've ticked all those boxes um you're happy with your country then you're going to want to find a venue uh, this is another minefield that took us quite a while i would recommend looking in a lot of places google's a great one um there's a couple of websites specifically that I use that had loads of destination wedding venues. I'll put the link in the description box. Uh, they had lots of information like price and things like that, capacity, which was really useful. I also looked on places like TikTok, YouTube. There's a lot of people that were kind of vlogging their experiences, looking around wedding venues, which was so helpful for us, not being in the country, not really being able to go to the country that we were getting married in. We found that incredibly useful to be able to look at videos. Um, obviously the venue themselves are gonna try and sell themselves. They've put photos and videos online, um, but it's just good to see from other people's perspectives and get their kind of pros and cons and opinions. One thing to uh, think about going into this is your guest list. It was really helpful for us to write out like a rough kind of guest list to get an idea of numbers because obviously you can't book a venue that only fits 30 people and then realize, oh, I actually want to invite 100. It's not going to work. So getting a rough idea of how many people, I mean, this goes for every wedding, not a destination wedding, but getting a rough idea of how many people are going to be attending um, whilst you're looking for a venue is really important. And just trying to visualize the day when you're looking at photos, where do you want to have your ceremony? Where do you want to have your, you know, the dinner and the reception? And trying to picture all that as you're looking at uh, venues. I must have looked at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of venues and inquired about hundreds in all different countries um, before we found our one. One tip that is so important is when you are asking for quotes, which I would recommend doing, make sure you read it so thoroughly, make sure you read the fine print. There were situations where say you have under a certain amount of guests, the price per head goes up. There were certain situations where they had very specific vendors only worked with them and their prices were above our budget. Every venue is so different and they have different kind of ways of working, especially if you're looking across different countries. Make sure you read everything so thoroughly. If you're unsure about something, ask the question. And also, I think you just get a bit of a, don't use the word vibe, but you do just get a vibe from the people you're talking to, how open they are with, I guess, their pricing, how willing they are to be really transparent with you. For example, our venue that we've ended up booking, just the woman we were speaking to was so, so open from the beginning. She offered to FaceTime us off the bat and show us, kind of give us a FaceTime tour of the venue so that we could actually see it. It's a family home that's been in her, her family for generations. So you could just tell that she was so passionate about it. She was so open, just felt like she really had nothing to hide, which just, again, not being able to go and see the venue, you always run the risk of things aren't gonna be quite as you imagined. I really just didn't have any of those worries with her. She just felt really authentic, transparent, which is just really, reassuring for us once you have made your decision again make sure you read all the fine print when you're signing anything and committing to a date and paying a deposit at this point i also found it really helpful the venue might suggest this anyway but if they don't ask them for a list of recommended vendors or kind of approved vendors ours gave us a list of vendors that they've worked with frequently for sort of everything involved and it's just really useful to work with vendors that already know the venue if you're not there to facilitate kind of the in-between um you don't know the venue well yourself if they have worked there several times before they know the layout they know exactly what they're going to need it just makes the whole process a lot easier um for example you can say i'm having this many guests at my wedding this is where it is and they'll say oh i know that venue i know kind of roughly how many flowers you're going to need what we're going to need to decorate the space so yeah we found that really helpful and just like easier to narrow down off the bat rather than having to look through a list of like thousands of vendors online and trying to figure out who's good who's legit who's going to scam you go with the ones that are trusted and known <laughs> speaking of the in being the in between between the vendors and the um venue wedding planners so we were lucky enough that our venue comes with a wedding coordinator 
who basically kind of acts as that in between as we get closer to the wedding just to make sure everything's lined up for the day and then on the day itself they are around again to make sure everything's going smoothly everything's coordinated if anything does go wrong we're basically not even going to hear about it they're just going to handle it the last thing you want on your wedding day i can imagine is for things to be going wrong and people to come be coming to you with questions and problems you just want to completely switch off from that and enjoy it i do anyway that's my plan so we were really grateful that our venue came with that coordinator there was also an option to hire an external wedding planner that just gets involved um, a little bit earlier helps kind of facilitate the whole process of planning the wedding it helps you put together your vision i suppose um, and kind of whittle down what you want personally i felt like i didn't need that initial step i already have a vision i have a pinterest board i have several pinterest boards and the price just didn't really warrant it for us um had we not had the in-house coordinator i think it's something that we would definitely have considered getting a planner um again just from being overseas it's just really hard to coordinate all that kind of stuff yourself without being there this is especially important i think um we don't speak the language of the country we're getting married in so to have someone that is fluent in the language and can facilitate vendors just makes life a lot easier there's no miscommunication everyone knows what's going on once you have found your venue and you've figured all this stuff out then you can obviously start looking at the list of vendors um some of the things we were recommended to lock in early were catering it's number one so we locked that in basically straight away once we've got the venue we started to look at like music and things like that flowers but the next step for us was getting the save the date sorted getting those sent out letting people know that it's a destination again giving them plenty of notice like a year and a half in advance so that they don't start planning any big holidays for next year hopefully can make our wedding their sort of summer holiday for for that year so yeah those are the initial steps we took after booking our venue um the other thing we said to think about is our holiday how long we're going to go for how far in advance we want to get there we obviously don't want to be jet lagged for the wedding so making sure that we get there in enough time that we have some time to relax recover recuperate before actually getting married also figuring out where we and all our guests will stay so we've um locked in sort of an area that we want to stay in that we're going to recommend to our, our guests to stay in we've also locked in a hotel again that we're planning on staying in that we're going to recommend to our guests so that we can say okay we're going to be there between this date and this date this is where we're staying this is the area this is when the wedding is please start planning your holidays accordingly would appreciate just giving everyone as much information as early as possible i think just can't hurt so that is where we're at i'm imagining from here on out it's going to be very much similar to planning a regular wedding it'll be finding vendors locking them in um and paying for things essentially is the next step dress shopping all that kind of stuff um there's obviously going to be some other bits and pieces in terms of flying my dress over with me and a few more little things that i will know more about near the time so hopefully i'll be able to do a part two on this when i get a little bit more into the nitty-gritty of things but this is a general overview of planning the big things and lock in <laughs> the wedding and all the things you need to know beforehand some of these might have been really obvious but hopefully this helps kind of give a bit of a plan and a structure if you are planning a destination wedding where to start and the process you need to take because it can be very overwhelming i can sympathize with that it's a lot but hopefully it's going to be worth it i hope you did find this useful again if you have any questions please feel free to leave them below i'd be happy to answer and please make sure you like this video and subscribe if you're not already it's going to be more wedding content coming soon thank you for watching and i will see you next time Thank you.